Back with coronavirus spreading fast in Oregon, more people are feeling the need to get tested. And if you're one of them, you know trying to book an appointment has gotten harder to do. So that eight, so that has OHSU reopening a testing clinic. It shut down just a few months ago at the Portland Expo Center. Tim Gordon reports. Reopened and testing for COVID. Starting Wednesday, the drive through clinic at the Expo Center is again serving the community. It's going very well. You know, day one, we get working out the kinks. We've, everybody who has shown up, we've been able to test. The site closed in June because the need had dropped. But a huge summertime surge of the Delta variant changed everything, according to OHSU's Debbie Lamberger. Oh, we've seen an increase in uh, exposures and positive cases and suspected cases and it's incredibly important that people get tested and know whether they need to be isolating and quarantining so that we can avoid any further exposures. This time it is by appointment, although they'll squeeze walk-ins in if they can. At full capacity, the clinic can test about 4,000 people a week, running Monday through Friday. The need is there. I think finding testing has been harder than finding vaccine right now, yes. There are other testing options from your doctor or health care provider to public health clinics to testing at pharmacies across Oregon. But it's not easy to book right now. I put my information in and looked for local appointments at Walgreens and found very few or no appointments available. Their website said due to high demand, availability is limited. The tests being administered by OHSU are the ones where the swab goes up your nose. The PCR tests are most accurate and you should usually get results back within 48 hours. They're free and for anyone two months or older. As a low barrier site are not limiting who we test, anyone who thinks they've been exposed, anyone who needs to get tested for work, um, for travel, we are trying to meet all the needs of the community, whatever they might be for testing. And with the need up, the same team that delivered tests here before is back at it. So we've got all the information on the Expo Center Clinic and booking an appointment at KGW.com. And one other interesting note, that while this clinic is set up for testing only, they say they could pivot to include vaccinations as well, should the need arise. And I'm sure that they would love that, because the more people getting vaccinated, the sooner this thing gets better. Tim Gordon, KGW News. In Cowlitz County, commissioners have had to declare an emergency because the county's only hospital is full of COVID patients, and so is the morgue. The county coroner's office is set to handle a maximum of 12 bodies. Over last weekend, they were at 19. By declaring an emergency, the commissioners have enabled the coroner to buy a refrigerated trailer that will be able to double the number of bodies they can house. The coroner says he's had to get creative to find space to preserve the remains, so a refrigerated trailer will help. We're overwhelmed. My, my people are exhausted. You know, we're doing the best we can to maintain the dignity of the deceased and get them back to their loved ones so they can continue on as a family. Overall, the county health department says it has never seen as many COVID-19 cases as there are today. The ICU is full at the Peace Health St. John Medical Center in Longview. Hospital staff have put up a tent in case they need to handle additional cases. Back here in Portland, the mayor says now that he cannot mandate all Portland police officers to get the COVID vaccine like every other city employee. Mayor Ted Wheeler says he's disappointed by this and he blames this new guidance here from the Oregon Health Authority. Issued Friday, it clarifies who's covered by a broader mandate for health care workers. And previously, the Oregon Health Authority had argued that police were covered by that mandate because they're trained to perform basic first aid. But now the state says police are quote probably not covered under the mandate because that's not a key part of their job. Dan Tanell is a lawyer who's helping a group of state troopers sue Oregon Governor Kate Brown over vaccine mandates and he told our Maggie Vespa first responders should not be forced to get the shot. What do you say to people who are undoubtedly sitting at home they're listening to this and they're just fed up and they and with, with vaccine resistance and they say no this is how you serve people by getting <laughs> vaccinated protecting yourself protecting others that's the answer for them but that doesn't mean they should impose that opinion on other people 
Portland's police bureau told us that they don't have actually an exact number of how many officers are vaccinated, but they believe that most are. The union, however, has warned that several officers would resign rather than get the vaccine. It's back to school today as thousands of kids in Beaverton return to the classroom today. Before the first bell rang this morning, we got a look inside Tumwater Middle School, one of the district's newest. Students have state of the art science and math rooms and a library with brand new books. Tumwater is also green. There are solar panels on the roof and the school collects rainwater that goes into the garden. One teacher says she's excited to welcome kids back. Yeah, I mean, students haven't been in a school building in over almost a year and a half at this point. So it's going to be so important this year to not only build really, really meaningful relationships and communities, but to see where they are and meet students where they are when it comes to academics. For students not comfortable coming back in person, Tumwater's principal says there's an option called Flex Online. It's available for grades K through 12. The kids in Veronia won't be heading back to school for another two weeks. The district postponed classes after a bus driver died from COVID and other drivers had to be quarantined. The superintendent made the announcement on social media just two days before school was supposed to start. He offered his condolences to people who are dealing with COVID and apologized for the late notice about the delay. Classes are now set to start September 20th. It has been one year since massive wildfires ravaged communities across Oregon. The coastal community of Otis near Lincoln City lost hundreds of homes, but the community is still hard at work helping each other rebuild. Here's Christelle Kumwe. September 8, 2020, when they told us to get out of here. That date forever ingrained in John Skelton's memory. We didn't think that we we're going to lose everything. We were sure that the fire was going to go the other way. The Echo Mountain complex fire ravaged through his neighborhood in Otis. His home was gone, everything scorched. You're just in shock. You have, you, you don't have any emotions because, you know, 80 years of your life have just disappeared right before you. The fire destroyed 293 homes in Otis. Unlike many others, the Skeltons did have insurance. There's not much to say or do. And you just have to pick yourself up and, and go on. He set up an RV where his home once was and joined a volunteer group to help clean up other damaged properties in Otis. We knew if we didn't help ourselves, nobody else was going to help us. It was just something I felt like it was my calling. This is Melinda Small led the volunteer effort. She, Skelton and others have been out every day since last October clearing debris so families can rebuild. If you just come together as a community and help each other and be there for each other, things get done. If we didn't have such good neighbors, we'd probably still be uh, trying to get our lives back together. This week, the Skelton's new home arrived to be placed on the same property. It's right behind us here and they're putting it together. In about another few hours, I'll be able to go through there and, and stretch our wings and, and see what it's like to be in a home again. A year to the date after flames took away all they had, a new date now stands out in John's mind. September 7th, 2021, great day. Our home finally arrived. John Skelton and his wife will be able to officially move into their new home in a few weeks. Melinda says of the 293 homes lost in Otis, about 72 families are back in their home. The volunteers are still out there a year later, helping each other out as much as they can. I'm Christelle Kumwe for KGW News. A year after wildfires destroyed more than a million acres across Oregon, $450,000 has been raised to help plant trees in the burned areas. The nonprofit Oregon Parks Forever, along with area businesses, including KGW, helped raise the money to help keep Oregon green. Craig Leach with the Oregon Parks and Recreation Department is one, one who determines where the trees will eventually be planted. He actually started making calls about getting seedlings as the fires were still burning last summer. All the the nurseries really got together and um, just kind of put all their resources into making sure that they could provide enough seedlings and enough seed beds. Leach says some of those seedlings will be planted as late as this coming winter and early spring of next year.